just when you thought you couldn't get enough football Thursday night, we break into another game Friday as the Eagles take on the Packers tonight in Brazil. Now, the Eagles, remember last time we saw them, they were having the meltdown last season, lost six of their seven games, last seven games, uh, lost that playoff game to Tampa. Uh, Packers have tons of expectations with all their young receivers. So, guys, I would ask you, who you got? You got the Eagles or you got the Packers tonight in Brazil? Yeah, look, I, I think it's a very tough game for anyone to definitively pick it because who the hell knows what the Eagles are off of last year's debacle in the last month and a half with only one win and the embarrassment in Tampa in that playoff game. I think the Eagles are a better football team, you know, top to bottom. Uh, but we just don't know what they are because we don't know really what Jalen Hurts is on the flip side. We know how Jordan Love and the Packers ended the season. Yep. But do we really know how good Jordan Love is going to be week after week? I will just say this about this game. My gut is that this is probably the last time in a while that we play a game in Brazil. Not that it's not a wonderful country and it's a great way to globalize the sport. But there's even a story this morning that has um, uh, Packer fans upset, rightfully so, that the Eagles are in a hotel apparently right next to the stadium or very close to the stadium. Green Bay's got to take a two-hour bus ride from their hotel to the stadium. You've got the bad air quality because of raging wildfires. Nobody's fault, obviously. Yeah. And then, of course, the threat of violence in the streets and, and gangland-type stuff. So, look, I just want to watch a football game. I'm sure it'll be presented perfectly, and we'll get great joy out of it. I think you're looking at two playoff teams, and I couldn't, for the life of me, give you a definitive pick on the game. Yeah, I had both of these teams in the playoffs, and so it just came down to, like, who do I have more questions about? And that's Philadelphia. There's a big one on Green Bay. They, they've changed their defensive system. They brought up Jeff Halfley from Boston College. They signed McKinney at safety, the yep. biggest contract for a safety. They're going to that single high safety defense, and that's different than how the rest of the NFL goes. But Philly last year, we could just show how both teams finished the season. Green <coughs> Bay finished the season – on a roll. They obviously had the incredible playoff performance against the Packers. Philly was a disaster. <laughs> like they, they were a disaster defensively. They really regressed offensively. The Giants game, obviously, yeah. we're all we're all gonna <laughs> remember. And and Philly had <coughs> op opponents' points per game. Their defense just collapsed. Yeah. And they they've got rookies in the secondary that against Matt LaFleur and Jordan Love and a ton of continuity on the Packers offense. This game should have a lot of points in it, and I just trust the Green Bay offense more than I trust the Eagles defense at this exact moment. Yeah, I know Mark's going to jump in here in a second also. I think this is the game where Jordan Love quiets any other, not doubters per se, because, yeah, I think the doubters are gone, but the question mark of were the final six, seven games, eight games of last year what he is now? Yeah. Or do I look at the first seven or eight games last year where he was kind of up and down like a roller coaster in performance. I think tonight's game will potentially solidify him as a legit top 10 level quarterback, Mark. Well, you know what? It needs to. And then you've made all those changes on the offensive side of the ball. You fired your offensive coordinator. You've gone in a new direction. You've got weapons. You traded for Jahan Dotson from Washington. So you've got three wide receivers that are as good as any three. Like if we want to talk about triumphants, they would be probably the best three wide receiver collection if any team in the National Football League. You've got a big offensive line. I know that Jason Kelsey retired, but I'm telling you what, Cam Jurgens moves over. He's an excellent player. You've got big, powerful Dallas Garden, one of the most underrated tight ends in football. Offensively, you've got all the weapons to be successful. You've got the new offense, the new offensive coordinator, and this is one of those things where it's Jalen Hurts, you got to prove who you are. Yeah. And I think he's a great quarterback. I really do. I really believe in Jalen Hurts. But listen, you've got all the weapons. You've got the coordinator. You've got the ability. And I know Danny brings this up all the time, and it's a great point, that that guy has never had the same coordinator since he entered college. I yeah. mean, it's, an, 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 it's just an unbelievable statistic. But you've got so many weapons. It is time for Philadelphia to dominate their division and come out there and prove who they are on the well, offensive I mean, side uh, of the ball. To be fair, two years ago they were in the Super Bowl. They did go back to the playoffs last year, yep. albeit on a one and six. I think it was right final seven yep. games uh, of the year. I, they're my pick to go to the Super Bowl, either them or San Francisco. You know, in the NFC. But you know, the big question mark for me is twofold. Right? 
It's what is Jalen Hurts? I know a lot of people make excuses for him that last year he was injured. Yeah. Uh, shoulder was uh, banged up. Knee was banged up. And he just didn't talk about it a lot. And what is Kellen Moore? Because Kellen Moore was not great in Dallas. Their offense has been better since McCarthy took over the play call in there. His offense was not good in L.A. I know Herbert got hurt you know, midway through the year. So this is also going to be a referendum on what is this Kellen Moore offense. And then at the end of the day, how quickly, if at all, does Nick Sirianni blow the whole thing up with his incompetence and punchable face? Yeah, I, I think the game, it's weird. It's, it's both of these teams and their <laughs> fan bases think they can win a Super Bowl. Sure. You know, both of these teams have really high aspirations. This game could come down to seeding uh, for a wild card in the NFC. I do think it's bigger for Philly, though, because of how, they, how it ended. Yeah, because of how it ended sure. last year. Like, Jordan Love, he's going to have plenty of time to validate himself. We could throw up the Packers' schedule. They're going to be favored after this game. Like, if, if Philly wins, it'll erase and wash out some of the taste in the mouth for last year. If Green Bay loses, they'll be favored in week two against Indianapolis. They'll be favored against Tennessee. They'll how, be does, don't you think it kind of depends? A like, to me, I, I think you, the street you're going down is the right one. This is a quarterback battle. You know, people in Philly are not sure now about Jalen because of last year. Yeah. People in Green Bay want to believe that we made him the highest paid quarterback in the history yeah. league when he signed his contract, that we made the right decision. So I think, while well, you're right, from a team standpoint, there's going to be a new narrative on one of these two guys after this game. Yeah, I just think there's more angst on the Philly side because the last time sure. we saw both of these guys, Jalen Hurts and the Eagles were not good, and Jordan yep. Love, I mean, I know he lost the next game, but they put up 48 points no, against I'm the Cowboys. You. I think that's fair. I think that's dead on. Yeah. I, I, think, I think in regards to Jordan Love, you know, we as, Amer we as America have only seen one season, right? And we saw what he did yeah. toward the end of last season, which was remarkable. But remember, Green Bay have seen him for four years, right? They've seen him practice. They've seen him grow. Green they've Bay's seen him not do in America? All the things they did. They, well, you said they, we they, as Americans, yeah, like really. Canadians have seen more out of him. It's a little bit. It's, yeah, it's like it's going to Czechoslovakia. We zip it's like we zip out. Alaska. You know, hey, those Romani roll, those Romanians know a lot more about Jordan Love than us Americans do. Like, what? <laughs> I know what you meant, Stan. You shut up. You, you I pipe know what down. You, you pipe down. Hey, you know what? The Packers <laughs> have seen him for four years. They've seen him compete in practice. No, they have the studies. They have a lot more. They have a lot more information than the rest of us do. You know who else has a lot more information than the rest of us no. do? That's our guy, Danny uh, Parkins, yes. because he's always got Thank Danny you. Parkins picks. And he is uh, ready to go. So go ahead, Danny. What do you got? Well, we're going to be making picks against the spread on uh, on Fridays. And I would just like to note, uh, one and oh. Yes. One, and by one, the way, one, if one you're going to gamble on football or follow Danny's picks or even bet against them, do it responsibly and do not chase bad losses. It's good advice. And yes, fade or follow whatever you want. But I intend fully to have a winning season this year. So the first game, I will be taking the points. This is a playoff rematch. Rams plus four and a half against Detroit like both of the teams this year but the number went from three and a half to four and a half going across the key number of four Matt Stafford in Detroit in a dome he had 367 yards passing last year this game should be a shootout the total is 52 52 and a half so they're expecting a lot of points I'll take more than a field goal with Matt Stafford in his old home do you get Stafford with points because remember they don't have to win the game outright yep. and they're so concerned about the crowd in Detroit again that Kelly Stafford is not going to the game. Oh. Just put it out there. That's worth gambling on. Sec, <laughs> sec, sec, second pick. I, listen, I think that both, I'm higher on Arizona and Buffalo than most what? people, but six and a half is a big number in Buffalo. And while a lot of people think Buffalo will be worse this year for reasonable, for good reasons, Arizona is going to be better. When they had Kyler Murray last year, they were the second best rushing team in football. They moved the ball, and they added a bunch of rookies, obviously most notably Marvin Harrison Jr., so it's the best receiver that Kyler's played with in a while. Plus, they are healthy right now at running back with James Conner and the depth that they have uh, there with Kyler Murray. So I expect Arizona to be able to move the ball against Buffalo. Two great things. Didn't I just say bet Stay responsibly? Second. Yeah. And number one. And number yeah. two, you're Mr. Josh Allen. I, I understand. Six and a half is a big number. Hey, hey. We bet numbers, <laughs> not players. Okay. Six and a half is a good number. Hey, Danny, we by, bet numbers. by the way, by the way, guys, second year in that offense for Kyler Murray. Remember, they changed over from the Cliff Kingsbury kind of, you know, more collegiate style of offense 
Drew Penzing is the offensive coordinator there, more of a West Coast, you know, zone zone running game type of offense. So second year should reap benefits in Arizona. And I know Danny Zone can only make picks against the spread in the moment. Uh, and I no longer gamble because I can't. If you're going to take it at six and a half, buy the half a point and make it seven. Don't be a knucklehead and lose by the hook. Just putting it out there as advice. Go ahead. I'm fine with six and a half. <laughs> uh, last one. What more needs to be said? Bears. Bears minus three and a half. Now, listen, I would bet against the Bears. No, you won't. Yeah, no, I would. I would. Probably not on this show. But here's the thing. Will Levis, he doesn't complete more than 60% of his passes. Bears have the best back seven in the NFL in terms of coverage. Two-plus takeaways for the Bears defense. They cover that number easily. Interesting that they're only favored by three, three and a half. Yeah, they're wrong. Yeah, 0 and 1. They're, they're up. <laughs> hey, 1 and 0. About to be at least three, at least 3 and 1 overall. <laughs> at least. Uh-oh. Hey there, thank you so much for watching Breakfast Ball. You know, you can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from our show. And hey, while you're at it, make sure to check out all the amazing content from all the other shows also right here on FS1.